I got three things for you. So I'll just use those three things. One of them is a contract. Always have a contract. Um, second, contract and scope really go together. The second I said is set your boundaries because he had the guy texting him and you know, you got to set your boundaries, set what it is you do best and, and let the customer know that this is how the best way to communicate with you. Start that now. Don't wait a year because it'll, they're hard habits to change even for yourself. And I'm trying to remember the third one. Oh, figure out what piece of it you really, really love. And, and focus on that. Do do really well on some other, you're gonna have to keep your skills on some of these other pieces, but what's the thing that you just, oh, you love to do? Hone in on that and become really, really good at it. Welcome to the WP Elevation Podcast. I'm today's host, Jin McEnany. And in my series of interviews, I speak with some of our top members who we call elevators. They share with us their highs, their lows, and how they've got their business to where it is today. So if you're interested in getting some tips and strategies from someone who's been exactly where you are right now in your business, you're in the right place. Without further ado, let's go meet the next elevator. This is the WP Elevation Podcast, helping WordPress consultants elevate. Hey, this episode of the WP Elevation podcast is brought to you by WP Elevation. Well, more specifically, it's brought to you by a bunch of our happy customers. See, frankly, I feel a little bit awkward telling you how great WP Elevation is because you're probably not going to believe me because WP Elevation is my baby. It's something that we started over three years ago. Of course, now we're a team of of, of coaches and mentors, and we have hundreds, and by the time you're listening to this, probably thousands of members all over the world. But it still really is something that I'm very passionate about. And, and of course, if you join WP Elevation, we make revenue and we make profit. So it's a little bit awkward if I tell you how great it is, because you probably think I'm just trying to sell you on it. And partially I am, because I know how beneficial the program is. So what I'd love to do instead is just introduce you to some of our customers. So if you go to wpelevation.com slash the podcast, all one word, you'll be able to hear some of those stories from our customers and hear for yourself how WP Elevation has impacted their business and changed their lives. I hope you enjoy that and I hope you check it out at some point. Right now, let's get back to the podcast. Christina Hawkins from Global Specs, thank for, thanks for joining us on the WP Elevation podcast. Hello, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. It's great to have you here, Christina. Uh, what, what I'd love to start off with is you've been a, a member with WP Elevation for a long time and you're now one of our community mentors as well. So you're a true asset to our company uh, and your knowledge and experience is second to none. So that's why we wanted to get you on this podcast and have a chat and see if you can share your wisdom with our listeners. Fun times, for sure. <laughs> now, can you start off, let's start off by giving us a bit of a history. What got you into this industry to begin with? Wow, let's see what got me into it. Well, um, uh, let's see how to. Um, I started off with the Defense Department years, years ago, 10 years at the Defense Department. And I was a management analyst, a defense logistics management analyst. And we just loved our acronyms. Uh, so I did a lot of technology even back then, um, back when Windows 95. God, I don't even know, Windows 3.0, whatever you want to call it. And uh, But I married a Marine. So that trajectory changed for me. And I had to figure out how I was going to not go job to job. So I started looking more and more into deeper technology and more and more how I can uh, contribute without having to apply for a job every two years and not being a secretary every two years. So that was kind of where I moved toward that area. And I was, yeah. So had you had any experience in in designing websites? Uh, You know, had you had a lot of experience in that or this is something that you just thought, hmm, this would actually work well with my lifestyle now? Well, so when I decided to take that turn, I went back to school. I was gonna get um, another degree in in IT. So I started off at a bank as a 27 year old intern where we were switching from telnet banking to online banking. So I was tech support in that building or in that same floor was all the programmers. 
and this thing called Homestead. And this guy was like, oh my God, it's so cool. Look at this thing. You could build a website. So I built a website on Homestead back in 1997. Oh my God. Nice. And yeah. So then I started, uh, moved of course. And my very first job within the first hour was to buy a four letter domain and build a website. So to answer your question in very long rounds, no, I did not have any experience, but not many people did when I started. And that just <laughs> set it all off. You got that, that sparked your interest and you thought this is something that I, I like could. this. Oh yeah. I was like, I like this. This is, this is fun. Yeah. So, and, but when you're in a small community at the time, it was a uh, Yuma, Arizona, very, very small, uh, word gets around. And I thought, gosh, I could do this for people. This isn't, you know, I could do this anywhere. I think that was the the big kicker of it. And you mentioned Arizona. And every time I see where you're from, Sugarland, I love the sound of that. It makes me think of a magical <laughs> place. I want to come and visit you one day. I know. Well, that's actually in Texas. So being oh. military oh. moved, we ended up in Sugarland, Texas, which is where the they used to manufacture sugar. And oh. they would, I think it was Domino Sugar. I have to double check. Imperial. No, no, no. Imperial Sugar. So is that where it got the name from then? Oh, how cool is that? I didn't know that. So, Excuse my geography, sugar, lack of geography sugar knowledge. Land. <laughs> so, yeah. so you've got into to this and then how did Global Spec start? How long ago how long has that been running and, and what what is your job? What do you what do you do there? What what's it all about? So I started in nineteen ninety nine. That's officially when I put it to paper and got, you know, designated as an LLC. And I got the name from my brother who was do, doing databases. He now works over at HP and he had data specs. And at the time you had to have an X after every end of every letter back in the 90s, late 90s. So I had an X on the end of mine and I just never changed it. Um, right now I am the president and founder of Global Specs and I have ooh, four, three, four contractors hoping to get a fifth one here coming up soon, all virtual contractors not i i tried the employee route well, it wasn't quite for me but um yeah and where are they based i'm sorry where are your contractors based uh let's see one is it well one is it, both are in argentina two are in argentina one's here in katie uh, which is about an hour from me and another one i'm hoping for we're actually on the lookout for a designer and i'm trying to remember the other one the other one is in alabama we just found a writer in Alabama. And then I have an Indian contractor who's been with me for about five or six years. Long time. So what, you know, you've been in this industry for a while now. Uh, what's What would you say your sweet spot is? What have you sort of niched down on or found that, that works the best for global specs? I uh, typically, my customers typically are engineering, energy, healthcare. So uh, my my thing is problem solving. So I think that kind of attracts those types of customers. They, they just like that analytical brain where I have analysis and research and I give them, I give them the numbers saying that definitely attracts those types of people. So those are my clients and area specialty definitely is problem solving. That's kind of how I tout myself. I'm a problem solver. I'm a consultant. I do not say I'm a web designer. Those are not in my vernacular. That does not come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote a wonderful uh, blog post for us. It's got so much traction uh, mm. talking about, you know, um, web, you know, web designers and, and t tell us a little bit about, will you tell us the, what, what that post was about? Because I just love it. God, I think that was one of those, I was just so fed up with what is, what is it going to happen to us with Squarespace and Wix? Where's our, where's our industry going? And I think it just sparked something in me. You know how you get that, that moment. You're like, I've had it. I've had enough of this. I'm tired of this argument. Um, it's been since 1990, since I built Homestead, it was another WYSIWYG. It was the same exact thing. It's not going away. And I, I just wanted the WP Elevation community to understand that and just any freelancer to know that, that it is not the website. It is you, your knowledge and your skills, the right photos, the right code, the right words to say in the right place with the right color. There's so much more involved than just sticking your logo and changing the colors. There's just so much more involved in it than, than Wix. And, and all, we all love Wix. They have their place in the world. Squarespace has their place in the world. They should be there. I have sent clients there. It's okay. Um, it's fine. And I'm not, it's, 
I think it was just one of those, again, I was fed up with that argument and I wanted to just, done. This is it. Final answer. Bang it on the head. (laughs) So if you've got a client who is, you know, talking to you about, oh, that's, that's very expensive. I could go and do it over here. What, how do you start that conversation with them explaining what the benefit of, you know, paying that little bit more for someone like you? Well, I actually had that conversation a couple months ago when we were building an e-commerce site. He said the same thing. He's like, I could just go over here and just put my put my um, products on there and, and be done with it. But you get into the whys, right? You start asking more questions. I don't answer why I'm more expensive. I just start going down the path, asking him her questions. What shipment are you? Gonna, what kind of shipping are you going to have? How are you going to measure that? What's your merchant? Do you know the merchant you're going to choose? Do you have, are you going to do subscription based or are you going to do free shipping? You know, all these questions that they're like, never thought about that. Um, and those things that customers don't realize until they actually get into it. And then they realize, I don't, I'm a photographer. I don't want to do this, you know, or I'm a, I'm a writer. I don't want to deal with it. This is, that's not their thing. I'm not a photographer and I'm not going to go out and take my expensive camera and propose that I am a professional photographer. So I think there's, everybody has a role and my role is to help you get the most out of a website or digital marketing as I can. I think that's such a good way to do it because it lets the questions speak for themselves. When they answer it, they can then see the answer. They don't need you to tell them. And that's why, as you know, with uh, WP Elevation, we teach the go wide, go deep method, which is just what you were saying. You just Mm -hmm. keep asking more, going wider, going deeper. Yeah. Yeah. And then they... Yeah, good. And so even more than just the why, but just all these questions, the where and how and what are you going to do in a month when it breaks down and who who's your tech support? Sometimes that also helps people understand my role. When you call tech support, how long are you going to be on line with tech support? 30 minutes, an hour? Are you going to get the problem resolved? When you call us, you make one phone call and most likely we'll have it resolved within a day without back and forth. I get to call tech support. <laughs> That's even if you can call tech support. You know, some sometimes you have to email, wait for the email. It's crazy. That's so a whole other question. <laughs> have it at all yeah exactly so yeah so that then helps them see that you're concerned more about the bigger plan not the website but actually what are their goals and helping them achieve their goals right right so what are some of the biggest challenges you've had with your own business uh, the biggest challenge is so, and this is one of the things that WP Elevation helped me with. So for a very, very long time, I did not value my own skills. I really, I didn't, I wasn't compensated fair enough for it. I didn't look at it from, again, the big picture of my skills are highly valuable. My skills are worth the money and the checks that come in. And my knowledge, my abilities, my years of experience all have a value, a monetary value. And I think WP Elevation helped me really cement that in my brain. I think it was there, but I just was afraid to let it out um, and and just stand up for myself and say, no, 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 wait a second now. I am worth 125 or 150 an hour. Um, And this, you know, I've had care plans for a long time. I had care plans and, you know, it, but I didn't value what that was to the customer. So they were inexpensive. Uh, they weren't ten dollars, but thirty five maybe. But even now that I've tripled that, and I get paid handsomely now, and I actually get a salary. So that was one of the biggest challenges just overcome that idea of I am worth it. I'm worth it. And the other thing is I'm too nice. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Christina Romero will tell you that too. She says too nice. She says that's too nice. But that so. is hard, especially if you like the person or you, you know, when you're starting out and you're feeling for them. But it's, I suppose, how would you define that line when someone is starting out and they their confidence is in actually the skills may not be that good. Like, so there's something about feeling that imposter syndrome, but you know, how about, where's that line when you know, okay, I think I've got the skills now to start charging more? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that's each person has to kind of find that. Uh, I do think that you you have to find the thing that makes you special. 
uh, I think like I was saying, I don't call myself a web designer. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a consultant. And so when you're just starting out, it's going to take you a little while to figure out what are you really, really good at. And that's what you need to pull out. And that's when you decide, okay, I need to be compensated for that. That's what I'm really good at. So, you know, if you're not good at digital marketing, SEO, you know, don't tout that. But if you're really, really good at building websites, they look gorgeous. They work really, really well for the customer. You can see ROI. Like, I think sometimes, too, when the customer comes back and says, oh, God, it, I really, it really helped me out. Man, thank you so much. I think a few of those wins help build your confidence. Um, definitely never, ever think you got it figured out. I think that's never, ever. You're still going to have doubt. Everybody does. There's that imposter syndrome is always in the back of your head. I don't care how big you are. Everybody has it. But I think if you just keep researching, learning tools, finding the best method, constantly tweaking, it. I think it helps. And then I like that because you can then focus on what you know you're good at. And then as you grow and expand, you can then outsource the things that you think, okay, either you don't like doing or you know you're not great at. And then, you know, then you can become that all round um, right. business as well. Have, have you done that too? How, how did you go with your, with your outsourcing? Well, that's another trick too, because never ever think you're gonna find somebody the very first shot. It's never ever going to happen. You're going to have trial and errors. You can you could have the best process, but you'll always it'll never always be perfect. So I've been through many uh, contractors, but I've just refined the process more and more each time. You try that different test the next time. I think also you're just trying to always learn who you work best with too. There's you know, you kind of have to understand yourself a little bit more and, and be honest with the contractor and just be honest and tell them, you know, this is how I work. This is how my process is. Are you, you think you can work that way? Um, and just be upfront, just like you with a customer, right? Yeah. I was going to say, it's the same thing, isn't it? With customers, because you will find that you start attracting the either customers or the people to work with who you know that you gel with and you both understand each other and and can work each with each other well without that bump in the communication all the time right and just know that the like i said the first person's are going to be the, the one that sticks with you you're going to have trial and error but try also to be objective about it i know i'm bad i mean i don't do as i say not as i do <laughs> um, <laughs> you know try not to feel bad about it and it's business and but gently say, this, is, this isn't working for us. I need to move on. Um, and just, and otherwise you're, you're dragging, you'll be, you know, dragging in the sand, trying to get things done. Cause you, you feel bad for this contractor, but mm. you need to kind of cut ties. Thank you for your time. Move on to the next person if it's not working. So is there anything that keeps you awake at night with worries about the business? Mm, well, yes. Um, <laughs> So I'm a mom with a newly 16-year-old. She turns 16 tomorrow mm. and a 10-year-old and a husband that works a lot. So I've got a lot of things juggling and things get missed. I think what keeps me up at night is the thing I miss, like, <gasps> you know, um, accounts receivable. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh. I need to invoice those people. Um, <laughs> Those things keep you up at night, but I have to say it, it's gotten better because I've built so many systems and, systems and processes in place to help me sleep better at night. So I don't have those panic moments of, I forgot something. So having the checklist, having the templates just really, really help that overwhelm feeling. Um, not that it ever goes away, but it gets better when you have those systems in place. Yeah, you can you can just say, right, I've finished for the day and it's not going to be on your mind the whole time. So what sort of processes and systems do you have in place? What, what have you found works for you over the years? Um, definitely my teamwork has been invaluable. Started off with Basecamp, moved over to teamwork, and I find it helps me just keep track of all the tasks and I pull in the contractors in them so I know who's who, where's what, what's what's due. So that's the core. That's where we build out from. Process Street has helped. Definitely email templates. I keep those in Google Drive. And so, and I am building an intranet. So 
I'm trying to pull all our resources for the company into one singular place so that we can just find everything that we need. That's that I'm trying to put that together right now, but checklists, email templates, um, even still with teamwork, I'm still learning. We, we realize my project manager and I realize we need to really stick with the milestones and, um, really, really get a little harder with our deadlines so that we can go back to the customer and to get the process moving forward. I know we always complain about con- you know, content, content, content is somehow letting them know, listen, we established this as a milestone date. We will not make that date if we don't get your information by this date and kind of sticking to it. Um, it's hard. It's hard. Don't it's, we haven't quite you know, gotten that in a real place yet we're trying them so So with that communication with the customer and talking about the milestones and and what you need how do you do you address that from the very beginning with you know in the meetings and how do you hold them accountable so you're not running late because of them and then you have all those money issues well we do have a onboarding process so we have emails that go out we do have an initial kickoff meeting and then we try to have weekly meetings so every meeting, we, we need this, we're waiting for this. Um, it doesn't always happen. It's just life, how it goes. Those have been very, very helpful. And, uh, but those, those help a lot in the communication process. But um, definitely weekly phone calls. And it, one thing that we're going to try and do is have a central location for what we need from them. So everybody sees we don't have these three things from you. I think we're kind of missing that. Yeah, that's good. And what about scope creep? How do you address that? Um, with an email. I, I document everything. So when we have a phone call and they make a change, I will send an email with a documentation that says, this is beyond the scope. This is what we've agreed on. It will be X dollars. I just had to do that today for a logo design. You know, this is actually a whole new logo. This is, we've already delivered it. It is now will be X dollars more. And you find people are generally pretty good with that? Yeah. 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 If, well, if, if you've you got it, off- yeah, if you've got it set in writing at the beginning, they know exactly what it is. They've signed it. Then there's there's not much room for them to move on. That is it. And no, and you remind them of it too. It's a constant reminder. They forget. You know, we don't have this from you, or you said we agreed to the. Oh, that's right. You know. So I just I don't assume that they're trying to break the scope. It's just human nature. Mm. Oh, I I thought of something. <gasps> Let me do this now. And like oh. So. Yeah, everyone gets excited. It's their little baby, isn't it? So, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all right, let's move on and talk about balance. So, you've got a 16 and a 10 year old, and your husband works really hard as well. So, how do you go balancing all of this? It is really a juggle, isn't it? Yes, and I don't balance it. I think that's the answer. You don't balance it. You There's days when you're with your kids and days when you're thinking about business and days when, you know, there's just, there's none of this. I don't believe in this. My kids don't believe in it. When I, hey, I'm, I'm in the office right now. The door is closed. Hey, kids, don't knock, don't even knock on the door right now. Um, but when I'm done here, I'll shut down. I'll go out and make dinner. And then when I'm, you know, there's just, there's no such thing as a balance. I don't believe in it. I just, I just feel that you know, just your customers as expectations. And um, my kids, you know, they wash their clothes, they do the dishes, they make their own meals, and they're pretty independent kids. But we take vacations together. You know, I get to go whenever I feel like going. That's the thing about mommy's work. I can pick up and go anytime and work anywhere. It's so refreshing to hear you say, I don't believe in balance, there's no such thing, because I totally agree with you. And uh, I listen to uh, the Slow Home podcast. It's an Australian Mm -hmm. um, podcast about, you know, just living more slowly in a fast paced world. And I loved the what they termed tilting. So they said there's no such thing as balance. So we tilt. So sometimes we're tilting this way in business. So the kids miss out a little bit, then we're tilting for the kids. So the business misses out a bit. So it's all about that tilting. And it it reminds me of a seesaw. And you know, you're never going to get that perfect balance. But it's about doing the best in everything that you're doing. And I think at the end of the day, when you look at it, everything seems to sort of work out. Yeah, yeah. It's never going to be perfect. Nothing's ever going to, you know, I can't just completely drop and solely work on the business all the time. I know that. So I just understand that and I walk away for a bit. But yeah, there's there is no such thing. And and I wish that 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 
that phrase would go away too, is that balance. How do you balance it? Like, well, I don't. And I don't know any woman or guy that does. And if they do, it's probably, they're probably lying because you're seeing stuff on social media that looks so perfect. But in in reality, it's not going to be like that. Oh, no way. I mean, really, if you're sitting down at dinner, I mean, if you're really thinking about balance, that means you've got your kids in front of you while you're working. That's not balance. There's no way. Mm -hmm. So you have to drop one to be with the other. You know, and it just goes, you know, and there, there are weeks when I'm really into the business and I'm heavy into it and I'm working hard and I'm, and kids are like, mom, mom. And then there are days where I'm all weekend long, we hang out, we go to the park all day long. I don't even look at my email. I don't look at anything and things get missed, but I just, I, you know. <laughs> and at the end of the day, have you found that this business has, has given you the flexibility to be able to do what you want, when you want with the kids and, and the family? Oh, for sure. I mean, if I had a corporate job, if I had to go to work, there would be no one here to pick up my daughter at 10 a.m. because she didn't feel good or take her to the dentist at 2 p.m. during lunch or hop off on some Hawaiian trip with my husband because he's like, hey, guess what I get to do? So absolutely, absolutely. You know, Mondays when there's a school holiday, I'm home. I'm here. I'm hanging with them. Right. So uh, I definitely feel that. Mm. And I think especially having kids, that is such a plus having your own business, being able to do that and not missing out on the lunchtime school performance and thinking, oh, I never made those performances because I wasn't allowed to get out of work. So I think Mm -hmm. that they're the sort of things that you can cherish and and, uh, be grateful for, for having your own business. Absolutely. And and again, though, I've been I've been in there in a in a lunch with the kid and popping over my cell phone going, hold on, (laughs) you know, (laughs) Just a little bit of multitasking. Okay, I'll be right back. (laughs) So how do you see Global Specs evolving over the next two or three years? Good question. Um, Always on my mind. What is this going to be in a couple of years? So I think less, it's hard. You know, there's so much change right now. So much change. And I'm not talking the the whizzy wig editors out there. I'm I'm just talking just in, in a general scope of digital marketing. So I'm trying to pull a little bit away from focusing so much on custom web design, right? We'll build your website. I'm really trying to look at the bigger picture of generating revenue for the customer. So I'm hoping in the next couple of years, I pull in more of that PPC, but even then PPC, SEO, I don't even want to separate them either anymore. I, I, I hate you know, we, we really did have these industries of SEO, pay-per-click, email marketing, you know, separated out. But when you look about 15, 20 years ago when we had paper, right, when we had yellow pages and we had the newspaper, when you had an ad agency, the ad agency didn't just say, well, I only do yellow pages. I don't do like newspaper ads and coupon books. We don't do those things. No, they, it was an ad agency and they did all of it. Because the whole point of it was the customer wanted a marketing person to bring in the business. And it depended on where, what pieces work together. So they would do a little coupon book and then they do a newspaper ad and maybe a television show, you know, or a ad. And that's how I look at my business or really any digital marketing is that, is going down that route of stop piecing these out. That is such a great analogy. I love that with the yellow pages and the newspaper <laughs> ads. It, it makes so much sense, doesn't it? It, it really mm-hmm. it has to be an all-in, um, not package, an, an all-in service where you look and you totally understand who their business is, what, what they need. And how right. do you find those skilling up in all those different areas? Is that a big challenge? It is, yeah. It's finding people that you work with better, best, it's finding the right contractors, but also the right customers that understand that as well. That's, you know, they also come in with their own viewpoint of, well, I was told I have SEO, right? So you, it, it's still that mentality. You have to change that mind. But even on, on our own side, when you have contractors, they have the same, you know, SEO, PPC. But for me too, I, you still have to find an SEO because they are individual ta- tasks you still have to do. But it's changing the customer's viewpoint and educating so, them. Is that right? Yeah, educating them for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, t- all right. So that's where you sort of see yourself going, and then um, 
what advice would you give someone who's sort of starting out, you know, just got things happening a little bit, not as far as Vance as where you are. Um, so you've still got, as you said, you're always growing and thinking bigger as well. It, it's a necessity. But what mm. sort of advice could you give someone starting out to sort of help them um, in, in the business in the first few years? So it's funny because we uh, at a local meetup, WordPress meetup, we had a young man show up. He must have been early 20s and he just got into this. Like he thought, I figured it out, WordPress, yeah. And it's exactly who that is. It's somebody who just started out, right? And and the first question he had was, how do I make money? I mean, honestly, that was his question. God bless him, you know? <laughs> and I just kind of whipped out the piece of paper. Here. Hold on a second. I got three things for you. So I'll just use those three things. One of them is a contract. Always have a contract. Um, second, contract and scope really go together. The second I said is set your boundaries because he had the guy texting them and you know you got to set your boundaries set what it is you do best and and let the customer know that this is how the best way to communicate with you start that now don't wait a year because it'll they're hard habits to change even for yourself and i'm trying to remember the third one oh no i forgot the third one <laughs> the third one oh shoot those are the two biggies the contract and that one and i think oh figure out what piece of it you really really love and, and focus on that. Do do really well on some other, you're gonna have to keep your skills on some of these other pieces, but what's the thing that you just, oh, you love to do? Hone in on that and become really, really good at it, like really good at it and get known for it. When you look at WP Elevation, you'll, you'll find that. You'll find the people that get are known for that thing and they get referred for it all the time and they love it. So you find that thing, find the thing, that is so good. Find the thing. We'll tweet that. Find the thing. But um, that is a common thread that's been coming through the interviews that I've been doing. People saying, yeah, just find that magic, Jürgen Strauss said, or find that sweet spot because that is what will get you known and that's your point of difference, isn't it? Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah. So with you, it's the problem solving. Yeah, yeah, big picture analysis, problem solving. Yep. Love it. Because, you know, you'll see I'm in there with the zap right in air table and trying to figure out how do I get this stuff done without a lot of manual and that's kind of I put that with my customers is how can I get this thing for you without you know so that you're not constantly thinking about it and worrying about it I want to solve that problem for you and it comes across so well when you're in that sweet spot you've got that confidence and you've got that knowledge and it that's that's what comes out and like you said you'll get feedback yes. From the client mm -hmm. saying yes that helped me so much so that'll and reinforce it, it. Into other things so when you're really confident about that one thing you'll find that you're a little more confident about some of the others you might not be expert at it but you have some confidence and your customer looks at you with confidence as well the seed of confidence has been sown <laughs> yes all right let's finish off i want to hear what your favorite theme framework is um framework definitely is beaver builder right now Mm -hmm. Definitely into that. So uh, the Yoast plugin is another really necessity of a tool. Zapier plugin is a big one for me. So I'm always trying to figure out pulling this and putting it into that. Uh, but those are the, the three biggies. Um, we, yeah. lo we love our zaps here too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what about your, your favorite WordPress plugin? Um, I got to say Yoast right now because I'm just really, really getting into, well, I've been into it a lot, but um, I actually bought the premium Yoast plugin. So I'm, I'm taking a little bit of their courses, trying to get a little certified in it and get really deep dive into the Yoast and all the tools that it can do for you. Uh, so yeah. And are you, happy, are you happy with the premium? It's worth it? Yeah. Yeah. So far, I've only used it on my website so far. So I'm just kind of really, like I said, deep diving into it. What, what all of the little things that it's going to do. So I haven't quite gotten to the point where I can say, oh yeah that's it this is the golden nugget of seo i don't know that yet <laughs> that's to come stay tuned <laughs> yes so christina how is or what's the best way for people to reach out and say hello and get to know you a bit more uh best way is uh definitely well linkedin is one find me on linkedin i've been checking out everybody on linkedin as uh, uh, um, twitter is a good good one too i'm on there a lot what's your uh, twitter at, handle at Global specs you know, um, if you search Global Specs with an X, you find me pretty much everywhere. <laughs> I love it with an X. 
<laughs> thank you so much. As I said, you've been you're an incredible part of our community, and you bring a lot of value to that. And I'm hoping, and I know that uh, people tuning in today would have picked up a lot of good pointers from you. So thank you very much, and good luck with the continued success of Global Specs. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode and got plenty of useful tips on how our elevators experience can help you elevate in your business as well. If you're interested in learning more about the WPE blueprint that's helped hundreds of WordPress consultants elevate their businesses, be sure to put your name on the waiting list at wpelevation.com slash waiting list. Until I see you next time, go elevate.